For years, we've been told that wrapping brisket in butcher paper or foil is the best way to go, but is plastic wrap actually superior to these methods? In this video, I'm wrapping a brisket in plastic wrap and comparing it to a foil wrap brisket, and we're gonna see which one comes out better, so let's get smoking. This sounds pretty crazy, right? I don't want plastic melting on my brisket, but a lot of barbecue joints actually use this method, believe it or not. In a 2013 Texas Monthly article, Daniel Vaughn interviewed Wayne Miller, the owner of legendary Louis Miller barbecue in Taylor, Texas. Wayne says that he wrapped his brisket in plastic wrap when it's about 95% done. Then he finished it on the smoker and he put it in a holding oven until service. The plastic wrap holds the moisture right at the surface of the brisket, whereas with foil, it would condensate on the foil and not on the meat. And also the plastic doesn't melt because it has a top layer of paper over top of it. So it doesn't melt, Steve, but what about BPAs and forever chemicals and plastic leaching into your food? I will concede that there are some health concerns and they are valid. But I also think, let's be honest, we don't barbecue to be healthy. Is it any less healthy than all of the carcinogens that we're layering on our barbecue through all of the smoke or the extreme amount of fats that we're eating on a daily basis that is raising our cholesterol levels? I don't really know, but if you are concerned about the detrimental effects of plastic, then I would recommend getting a higher quality plastic wrap, such as Glad plastic wrap, which is certified to be BPA free and it's free of toxic chemicals. As long as you do your research and make sure that your plastic wrap is BPA and toxic chemical free and it has a high melting temperature, then in my opinion, I think the health risks are pretty minimal. Okay, back to my internet sleuthing. Two years later in a 2015 NPR interview with Wayne Miller, Wayne clarified that he pulls his brisket right off the smoker when they're about 95% done. So they're not quite done yet. Then he wraps them in plastic and puts them in a warmer for four hours to rest down and finish cooking. He does note that he switched to butcher paper because it's cheaper and breathes better, but I've seen a lot of internet comments that say that a lot of barbecue restaurants still wrap with plastic and I've seen a lot of social media posts to confirm that. For example, this Instagram post shows how Bobby Q Barbecue in Mesa, Arizona wraps their brisket in plastic wrap. So it has been done in the past by top barbecue restaurants. It is still being done by a lot of barbecue restaurants, but the big question is, is wrapping in plastic better than wrapping in foil? That's what we're gonna find out in this experiment. So I'm starting with two choice grade briskets, probably lower choice based on the marbling, and they're within about 10 grams of each other in weight, so pretty similar size. I'm slathering them with Golden Mountain seasoning sauce for some extra flavor, and then I'm applying my Smoke Trails barbecue brisket rub, the best brisket rub on the planet, in my totally unbiased and objective opinion. There's a link below to buy it on Amazon, and if you like it, please be sure to leave an Amazon review. I really appreciate it, and it helps the channel out a ton. Now I'm moving over to my Pits and Spits Maverick 1250 pellet grill and lighting up the smoke cage for some extra smoke flavor and bark. I'm putting it over the burn pot and filling it with large and small chunks of wood, then a couple charcoal briquettes to help it burn longer, and once it's lit from the burn pot, I place it to the side of the burn pot, and I'll be sliding in chunks of wood roughly every 30 minutes to keep it lit. Now the deflector plate and the lower grate goes back in, and I'm placing a few large water pans on the bottom rack, these are going to absorb the radiant heat from below, add humidity, and ensure we just get nice, gentle, convective heat getting to the briskets. The briskets are going on the smoker now at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is one reason I really love the Maverick 1250. It's got plenty of space to cook two briskets on the top rack, which is super important. And that takes me to the sponsor of this video, Pits and Spits. Pits and Spits is a made-in-Texas manufacturer of ultra-high quality offset smokers, pellet grills, charcoal smokers, and much more. They sent me this Maverick 1250 pellet grill, and I've been using it every week to make the best briskets I've ever made on a pellet grill. With the optional smoke cage attachment, the Maverick allows me to make offset quality briskets on a pellet grill, which is something that I never thought that I would be saying, but it's actually true. I think that my pellet grill briskets on the Maverick are pretty much indistinguishable from the briskets that I make on my offset smokers. The smoke flavor, the fat cap rendering, the even cooking, all of it lines up in this machine to help me make amazing Texas style briskets with all of the convenience of a pellet grill. The other thing I really appreciate about this cooker is how solidly built it is. It's fully welded, it's 
beefy, it's thick steel. It really retains a lot of heat when it gets up to temperature and results in more even cooking temperatures. It also has a fully slide out bottom and top rack, allowing me to put a large water pan below my briskets, which as you will see in this video is absolutely essential to getting good quality briskets on a pellet smoker. This thing is an absolute beast and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a real pellet grill with quality that you can pass down to your kids and performance that knocks cheaper pellet grills out of the park. I'll put a link to the Maverick as well as the smoke cage in the description section below for you guys to check it out. All right, let's get back to the video. Now, every 30 minutes or so during the cook, I'm checking on the briskets and I'm putting a chunk or two of wood into the smoke cage to keep it going. That's what's gonna give me the offset quality smoke flavor on these briskets. And once the briskets hit 140 internal, they start sweating out some moisture around four or five hours into the cook. I'm bumping up the temperatures to 300 degrees to finish the briskets and most importantly, to render the fat caps. Now, normally this would nuke your briskets and absolutely destroy them. They would be so dry and tough and leathery that you wouldn't even be able to eat them, but because we have those water pans below and the briskets on top, we're absorbing all that radiant heat from the burn pot below into the water pan. That's creating humidity, absorbing that radiant heat, and we're getting nice gentle convective air up and around the water pans and hitting the tops of the brisket to render the fat cap, which usually takes above 275 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Usually around 300 is what I find is the sweet spot to get that really well rendered fat cap that is yellow, caramelly, absolutely delicious, has a little bit of sweet flavor. That's what we're going for and that's the way to do it. 300 degrees with the water pan below, briskets on top, nice gentle convective heat going up and around on top of the briskets. That's what's gonna help us make the best brisket possible on a pellet grill. Now, after the briskets hit 170 internal, I'm foil boating them with aluminum foil. This will help them cook more evenly so the flat and point finish at the same time. It works a little bit better on an offset smoker because we have top down heat and usually the bottoms need a little bit more heat. On a pellet grill, it doesn't work as well, but I find that it still helps a little bit. So I do still use the technique when I'm doing a pellet grill cook. And finally, the briskets have both hit around 190 to 195 internal everywhere I probe. So I'm I'm getting ready to wrap them and let the long hold finish them off. For the plastic wrap brisket, I overlapped a bunch of layers of plastic and I put the brisket down over top of some tallow and ghee, which is basically clarified butter. Then I carefully seal it up and I roll it up and tighten it. And finally, I'm wrapping it in foil and putting it in my holding oven at 150 degrees for the next 18 hours. Moving on to the control brisket, it's just getting wrapped in two layers of aluminum foil with tallow and ghee, no plastic, and it's joining the other brisket in the holding oven. All right, guys, it's the next day and I have the control brisket here, so I'm gonna unwrap it and we'll take a look at it. Okay, hey, the brisket's looking really nice. As you can see, it has a nice dark bark on the exterior. Looks like it has gotten a little bit soggy, but the bark is still pretty good. Good fat rendering. I can press down on the fat and we're getting some good rendering, which is really good when we're doing it on a pellet grill, especially because Typically, you don't get very good fat rendering unless you use the method that you saw in this video. Also, you'll notice that there's a lot of liquid surrounding the brisket, so I'm interested to see how the plastic wrap compares to that. It's not bad bark, actually. I forgot what video I was doing for a minute, and I thought this was an offset smoker brisket because it looks really dark. It looks like an offset smoker brisket. Just gonna get some tallow on the board here, and I'm gonna weigh the brisket. 3444, so 3,444 grams. So that works out to, da, 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 would be 62% of its weight is remaining. Now, plop this guy down here and we're going to slice it right in the middle-ish, uh, right about here. Schwing! I'll give you guys a look. Oh, wow. That is super juicy. I don't know how the plastic wrap brisket could possibly be more juicy than this, but maybe it will be, we'll see. I'm just gonna get a flat slice here. Give you guys a look. I mean, there's a lot of the point on there, but I'll pull the point, pulls apart really easily, tug test on that. Whew, really tender. Mmm, tender, juicy, beefy flavor. Really sweet, beefy flavor. Bark is delicious. Everything about this brisket is perfect. And you guys can see that the fat is rendered. It's got a little bit of white underneath, but it's getting that rendered yellowish consistency and that's creating a lot of flavor. You guys, a closer look. So again, you can see how that fat cap rendered right down so you can barely see it. Yellowish, caramelly, that's where the flavor is. And I did this on a pellet grill. So you can do that on a pellet grill just like you can do on an offset smoker. 
Again, if you follow the method that I did in this video. Okay, now we've got the plastic wrap brisket here, and when I unwrapped it, there was absolutely no moisture or drippings or anything in the foil, which tells me that this plastic wrap is completely sealed, which is good, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, if we look at it here, we can see that there's a little bit of liquid pooling on the bottom, but I mean, not really that much. Okay, let's unwrap this thing. Okay, we'll release this guy from the plastic wrap. There's a ton of liquid and juices in it, and the liquid was being held very close to the brisket surface, but it doesn't look like it softened the bark any more than the foil wrap brisket. Again, we've got some good fat rendering here. Lots more juices on the board, that's for sure. Okay, I'm gonna weigh this guy now. I'm gonna get as much of the drippings off of it as possible. This has a lot more fat stuck to it, fat and liquid. So, I mean, I think that's already adding some juiciness, but I don't want that to conflate the weight results because if there's more fat sticking to it, it's gonna be heavier than the control brisket. Okay, I think that's good. So we're going to put it on a scale. It looks like this one lost more weight than the control brisket. Let's do some maths. Doing some math, doing some math. 3306 divided by starting weight of 5570 grams equals 0.593. So this plastic wrap brisket lost more weight than the control brisket, but the real test is how good it tastes and what it looks like inside. So we're going to cut it down the middle here again. It feels more tender and jiggly than the control brisket. All right, I'll give you guys a close up here. Oh my God, that is crazy. That looks so juicy. I don't know about you guys, but that looks a little bit more juicy than the control brisket. Actually a lot more juicy. So I'm gonna put some tallow on there and we'll get a piece of the flat. Give you guys a look there. Whoo that looks super good. Let's pull it apart. Pulls apart super easily. Oh yeah, oh baby. Tastes about the same texture wise as the control brisket. Juicy, beefy, really good brisket. And as for the bark, mm. <laughs> So the big question, does wrapping in plastic produce a better brisket than wrapping in foil? I would say I don't really know at this point. I'd have to do a couple more briskets, plastic wrapped versus foil wrapped to really make a decision. But what I can say is that even though the plastic wrap brisket lost a little bit more moisture, it lost two percentage points more moisture than the control brisket, it seems like on the plastic wrap brisket, the collagen is a little bit better rendered. It's more jiggly. I think that there was more juices that came out of the brisket when I showed it to you guys. You guys can tell me, but the brisket looked juicier and it just feels more tender. Having said that, that could just be the specific brisket. Maybe it was a little bit better than the control brisket. Maybe it had more fat marbling than the other brisket, or maybe it could just be how the cook went. It was on one side of the smoker more often than the other side of the smoker, so maybe it got a bit more fat rendering and even cooking than the other brisket. It's tough to draw broad conclusions based on one experiment, but based on this specific video, the plastic wrap brisket turned out better than the control brisket that was wrapped in just foil. So take that as you will. And if you guys have any other ideas of where I should take this specific experiment or any ideas for other experiments, let me know in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video and until then, happy smoking.